and cloudy Saturday evening in Atlanta. It is darkest and cloudiest for the Cincinnati Reds who find themselves down three games to none in the National League Championship Series. Game four coming up between the Reds and the Braves. Hi, welcome to The Architect. I'm Jim Powell with our special guest, John Scherholz, as we go through the great National League Championship Series victories of the Braves in the 90s. We are on the third episode, that is 1995, which was a special year well beyond any of the others. And John, uh, what were your expectations for your team in 95? Had you gotten to the point at, at that stage, uh, obviously you're coming off the strike year, so there'd been a little bit of an interruption. Don't know right. if that would have slowed your momentum. But what was, what was your feelings about, about the 95 team going into the year? Well, the work stoppage in 94, you know, put all, all 30 organizations, you know, sort of back on your heels a little bit. You couldn't really have the aggressive approach to putting your teams together, but we tried to do the best we could, and 95 was delayed slightly, and we lost, we lost some game time out of that season. But once it got started, these players on our clubs and the clubs that we were playing are playing baseball again. They were ready to play, ready to compete, and ready to try to win. Well, you took care of the Rockies in the NLDS, and then you take on the Reds in the NLCS. The Reds had a good team. They had a lot of... Very good players. They were a good offensive club. What were your thoughts about that matchup in the NLCS? Well, it was a tough matchup. You're right. They, they were very, very strong. They strengthened themselves well over the offseason. They did their jobs putting a team together. And we knew we were going to be in for another tough match. Well, the Braves had won the, uh, or were trying to win their third National League pennant in the last four completed seasons. I mean, you were already, it was already shaping up to be the team of the decade even before we got to magical 95. Steve Avery. Four years ago, the National League Championship Series MVP for the Atlanta Braves, getting his first start of this postseason tonight. What about Steve Avery and, and the job that he did uh, throughout the playoffs? I mean, he, he at this point was, was uh, really a, an outstanding pitcher. You can't say enough about young Steve Avery. I mean, he stepped in when we had a void. He filled the void in, in great measure uh, in championship fashion. Uh, and he did it time and time again, and he did it again in this series. Here's Mike Devereaux having himself a good NLCS, filling in for Dave Justice in right field tonight. A, a key uh, acquisition in uh, 1995 that helped the Braves a lot in this matchup with the Reds. How different would this NLCS have been if it weren't for Mike Devereaux? Yeah, Mike was a, a last minute acquisition towards the end of the trading deadline. I, I was able to acquire him. And he really filled the exact role that we were looking for him to fill. That is to be on the bench, play defense, do some pinch running, have, have some at-bats against left-handed pitchers. And he's a real top-notch professional. And so we knew he was going to be an asset to our organization and to our team. And he clearly demonstrated that in this series especially. I know you can look it up right now before we even talk about it and see that the Braves swept the Reds in this series four games to none. So there wasn't, it doesn't seem like there was a lot of drama, but actually there was plenty of drama as uh, game one in Cincinnati, the Reds had home field advantage, went 11 innings and the Reds pulled it out, or the Braves finally pulled it out in the 11th inning, two to one. Uh, Reds had a great chance to win that game. Then game two, it's the second straight extra inning game. And it's a 2-2 game to the 10th inning when the Braves put together a four run rally to grab game two, six to two. And people again will forget that, oh, it was a sweep, it's no big deal, let's just move on and see what happened in the World Series. But uh, in reality, the Reds are sitting there kicking themselves. They had great chances to win both of the first two games. Could have been an entirely different NLCS. Yeah, you're right. This was, this was another well-played series uh, like we had with a couple of, with the Pirates prior. Uh, the Reds were loaded for bear and they were ready to win and uh, they, they put up a great effort and we had to do all that we could to win that series. And Avery goes uh, uh, seven strong innings, uh, or six strong innings in game four as he beats Pete Shurek to clinch the victory. And, uh, and the Braves had their four game sweep. And I know you've had a lot of exciting series and I'm sure you enjoyed all the ones you won and none of the ones you lost. But exactly. something about getting a deep breath of, okay, we only had to play four games this time. Right. I mean, how good did that feel? Well, it's refreshing for the players because if you can, if you can win a series in the shortest amount of games possible, which is four in that series setup, uh, they have a chance to catch their breath, to, 
to get some rest, to spend a little time with their families, and to rejuvenate themselves uh, personally and professionally to get ready for the next tough series that comes up. Here's Charlie O'Brien. Got a standing ovation from the crowd here last night. And get some applause as he steps into the batter's box here in a pinch hitting roll. I think you had a great series against the Reds with Charlie O'Brien. He's a guy that people, I mean, we remember him. He was a good player, but we don't remember how well he played in that uh, four game series. Charlie was another one of those acquisitions that fit right in perfectly. A tough guy, a good catcher, good handler of pitchers, get big hits from time to time, and a real, real competitive guy. So he was a great add on for us going in into that season and, and to what he did in the playoffs. It's so difficult in, in baseball. There's probably more of a scarcity at the position of catcher than anywhere else. And yet, as you go through the 90s and look at the successful teams that the Braves had, it seems like the catchers, time and time again, whether they were well-known like a Javi Lopez or more unsung like a Greg Olson, or in this case, a Charlie O'Brien, in the postseason especially, your catchers kept coming up huge each time. They did, and it's a tough position, as you know, Jim. It's a tough position handling the pitching of the, of the, of the pitcher on the mound, keeping him in control, blocking the plate, scrambling to get balls nubbed in front of home plate and thrown the first or third or whatever. It's a tough position, and these guys that we had in wearing that uniform and, and that equipment did the job for us every time we sent them out there. How would you and Bobby make the decision as to, okay, who's going to catch Greg Maddox in this game? Who's going to get the start against John Smoltz? I mean, everybody was performing so well. How did you guys work together to figure out what was the best fit for this game? Well, a lot of it had to do with how well they played against that team during the regular season when they had matchups against pitchers and whatever. And if it was Charlie O'Brien or if it was Greg Olson or Javi Lopez, whoever it might have been, uh, the manager and the coaches all knew that and they had an instinct and a feeling that this would be the right guy to catch this, this pitcher for us and to be in that, in that ball game against the Reds in that series. I want to look behind the curtain just a little bit and ask you about something else about Bobby Cox because you, you mentioned the word instinct and that's what I think of when I think of Bobby. He's, he was old school, you know, think, listen to your gut, make decisions not just based that are cookie cutter or that help you in the post game press conference, right. but actually listen to your gut and try and win the game with the best possible decision. How would Bobby have been in this era of analytics where you've got so many advisors, so many analysts, everybody putting input, everybody thinks they've got not just a guess as to what the answer is, but they know how you should play it. How would Bobby have handled that? Well, I know a lot of people, or some people, view Bobby as an old school manager, a guy who puts on the uniform and instinctively played the game uh, a lot as a, a major leaguer and, and managed a lot. And, and they dismiss the fact that his intellect and his instincts and his willingness to be open-minded about statistical data that could help him make a better decision. He was very willing to absorb that, very willing to utilize that, and the combination of those instincts and that, and that old-time baseball guy really, really came before every time he went to the dugout. Last question about the, the NLCS with Cincinnati. Mike Devereaux was the MVP, and, and he deserved it. He was four for 13 with a double, a home run, and five big RBIs. But uh, what kind of gets overlooked, if you don't get that word, that, those, that acronym MVP next to your name, is other guys who came up really big offensively. Chipper Jones hit 438. Fred McGriff hit 438. Chipper's on-base percentage in that series was 526. Fred McGriff's on-base percentage in that series was 526, and they both slugged well over 600. Remarkable. So with those stats that you just shared with us, for Mike to win the MVP against those kind of numbers, that means he was really appreciated for what he did defensively, what he did on the bases, what he did throughout the series, and that's how he got the MVP, although the other guys could have been very, very good candidates as well. So when the series was done, did you feel like you were perfectly positioned to break through and win the World Series finally? Yes, I did. I mean, the team played well. The, the euphoria was, in the, was with the young guys. We had the energy, the positive energy, and they were still winners in my heart. And it's exactly what happened. We all know the history of what happened the rest of the way in 1995. John, thank you so much for your time and insights, and we look forward to more when we come back in our next episode of The Architect, and we'll focus on the 1996 National League Championship Series. For John Sherholtz, I'm Jim Powell. Thanks for watching The Architect.